Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about computer specs and how it relates to music production. So let's fire it up. So next up we have RAM. Now RAM can be a little bit confusing. People tend to mistake RAM with hard drive space and storage, but hard drive space and storage is hard drive space and storage. That's what that is. RAM, <clears throat> also called memory, is a different concept. It is um, what they call volatile storage, which, which means if there's no power present in the computer, it does not exist. And also, whenever you load a program, it loads up in RAM because it cannot run off your hard drive it would be too slow. So when you start your program, it loads the program in RAM, and while the program is opening and you're doing whatever you're doing, it's existing in RAM as long as there's power in the computer. Every time you hit save, it saves whatever the last state of the program was, whatever you're working on, it saves that last state to your hard drive. So that's why if you save something five minutes ago and then you did five minutes of work and you forgot to save and then your computer cuts off, you lose all that work because it was in RAM and RAM does not exist when the computer power goes or when you close the program. So it is important for you to save because when you save, it saves whatever is live in RAM to your hard drive so that you can reopen it later from your R drive right back into RAM. So sidebar, save often. Now, the analogy that I can give you for RAM is let's say you have a class of about 25 kids to teach. Um, the question would be, would you want to teach them in a room the size of your bathroom? Or would you want to teach them in the size of a gymnasium? Now, the gymnasium and the bathroom represents how much RAM you have. The classroom and the size of the classroom represents the program you're going to be running, software you're going to be running, and how complex the software is. So if you have a complex software, it'll be like the equivalent to having a big class, like let's say 45, 50 kids. Now you're trying to cram a classroom of 45, 50 kids, all their desks and everything they need, plus your desk and everything you need as a teacher into a bathroom. It's kind of hard to operate and effectively conduct that class. And that's what you try to do when you try to open a very complex program with very little RAM installed on your computer. That's why it tends to freeze up because there's no room, virtual room for it to operate and move around. Just like a class of 25 or 45 kids in your bathroom. So if you have a gymnasium and you're teaching a class of 25 kids, you can stick them in one corner and then you can actually have another class in another corner of the gymnasium and two more classes in the other corners, those classes can operate and not really interfere with each other. And that is the analogy of RAM. The gymnasium would be a lot of RAM and it would be sufficient RAM to run all those four classes, which represents four different programs. So you could have them all open at the same time, going back and forth, doing what you're doing and not have to worry about your computer lagging, slowing down, crashes and all that stuff. So you want to make sure that you have sufficient amount of RAM based on your workload. So are you going to have a lot of big sessions where you're recording a lot of live instruments? Are you doing a lot of MIDI? Are you using a lot of uh, MIDI plugins that have these humongous libraries, you know, 20 gig piano libraries, stuff like that. You need a lot of RAM to be able to load that stuff and be able to play it smoothly and not have your computer hitching and glitching and crashing and you getting all these error messages. So RAM is also a very important aspect and you definitely want to look into how much RAM you need for what you are doing. You definitely want a processor that's going to do that very fast and very efficiently. So there's tons of processors out there and lately over the last probably five or seven years 
they started having the dual. Tip number three, learn and understand how to use the tools that you are using to do the mix. Like your compressors, gates, limiters, EQs, and things of that nature. Because not all so for me personally, I use four different DAWs. Two of them I use more just for building beats, composing music, things of that nature. And the other two I use more for recording audio, recording vocals, recording.